guys, I hope you enjoyed the dyno footage. We got the Q50 dialed in today. Very pleased with it, but like I said at the very beginning, I have a very special guest here today who is kind enough to bring some additional uh, camera equipment and spend a little bit of time with me today, but now, without further ado, the gentleman, the man, the myth, the legend. I've referenced this channel before, but here he is in the flesh. Evan? What's happening, guys? Savage Panda Projects. The Habitat for Horse Power. You gotta, do, you gotta do your introduction for me here. Savage Panda Projects. The Habitat for Horse Power. Can't beat it. Well, I'm very happy to be in the Habitat for Horsepower today. Is that, did I say it right? Yeah. The Habitat for Horsepower? <laughs> sure thing. Uh, we are in a, what year is this? It's a 2016. It's been a fun car, man. I've, I've had a good time. It's it's been uh, it's been a good experience. I mean, I've, I'm absolutely 100% all day a huge fan of Nissan Infiniti. Always holds a special place in my heart uh, for the Q50. So I've definitely branched out, broadened my horizon a little bit. I've, I've had fun with the A3, man. Uh, 2016 A3 Quattro, APR Stage Two, full bolt-ons, and it's been good. It's been really good. And what what you haven't gotten a full complete pull on a dyno but what are we estimating power and torque to be at right now so for uh apr stage two um going by their graph they're they're calling it 337 uh, horsepower and i believe about 380 pound feet of torque roughly crank mm -hmm. wheel it would be uh obviously uh a it would obviously be necess it would obviously be necessary to uh complete an actual dyno pull to get some realistic numbers but that's kind of your estimation yeah, give us an idea so, yeah, putting that kind of power to the ground and that amount of torque through an all-wheel drive system. In a car this system. size. In a car this size. Do you know the weight? Uh, I want to say maybe like 3,300, 3,400, something like that. So, yeah, there not you go. the lightest, but it, it is it is lighter than the uh, than some of the other larger sedans on the road. We can consider the Q50 the range like 36 up to 38, 3,900. That so. sounds about right. Yeah. Let's try this back row here and see how we've done this. little flutter there. I hope that got picked up. Yeah. <laughs> the shifts. So quick, so snappy. Big and breaks. good brakes too. And another thing too for anybody watching, if you're thinking about you know getting into like a Mark 7 DTI or an Audi A3 and you're looking at the numbers, you're gonna be like, okay, well this car's trash. It's only rated for 210 or 220 horsepower. And I made a video this a video about this the other day, just talking about how kind of you know a lot of people they might write this car off because they're not looking at the aftermarket side of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking a downpipe and performance software. That is it. We're talking maybe fifteen hundred bucks. You're you're getting well over three hundred horsepower and very very much close approaching four hundred pound feet of torque. So dollars per horsepower are absolutely one of the best values on on one of these cars. So before you you know just brush it off as you know some mickey mouse you know kids meal nonsense with <laughs> the 210 horsepower 220 yeah just know that you have a lot of power left on the table i mean the reactions you're getting right now you would not be getting that if we're dealing stock you'd be, you would think you're sure. essentially in a jetta or something like that dollars to horsepower that's you're talking my language there just don't start putting s3 badges on the car absolutely not <laughs> that is one of the most flagrant offenses of the car community I'm watching you yeah see that M badges everywhere. But the key is you're dealing with a turbocharged engine out of the box, you've got a dual, dual clutch transmission, and you've got all wheel drive. That's really the big three because I, I mean, I would challenge you guys watching to name, name a car that offers those features that you could buy used for under 30 grand. What car can you buy what that you comes out of the box, dual clutch, all wheel drive, turbocharged engine that has aftermarket support? Let us under count. 30 grand used, what car can you buy? Interesting. I'm going to do some Think research. About Think about that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Takes your breath away. This car is obnoxious, but it's... You have to kind of work to make it loud with uh, the stock catback. Even having an aftermarket APR downpipe with a resonator lead, 
I mean, it's still pretty tame, unless, of course, you go into the, uh, the crackle mode, which can be uh, quite hilarious at times. <laughs> so, I have to ask you the main question. We are driving an Audi. Yes. And to quote Michael Scott, you an office guy? I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. <laughs> so I don't like to talk about the topic that much, but how is this car in terms of reliability? So I've owned this car for about two years now. Uh, the 2016, I bought it certified pre-owned uh, from an Audi dealer with 9,000 miles on it. So I am the second owner. Uh, I've taken really good care of it as far as you know, oil changes, rotation, spark plugs, uh, ignition upgrades, just trying to be really proactive. I know the factory service guide recommends Factory service guide recommends every 10,000 miles to change oil. I've actually changed every 5,000, and I change the spark plugs about every 10,000 miles. Okay. So I've been very proactive uh, in that regard. I have had no problems, man. I can't say I've had any troubles whatsoever, fingers crossed. <laughs> find some wood to knock on somewhere. But I've been stage two for uh, over a year now, and I, I've had no problems. I've had no issues, stock engine, stock transmission, stock turbo. I mean, it's, it's solid, man, really? every day daily driver no issues so I can't I really can't complain I think that it's good it's unfortunate that Audi and Volkswagen get such a I guess kind of a bad rap in terms of like the, per, the perception about their reliability yeah but I think for anybody that's kind of on the outside looking in I would not be afraid of the four rings at all I mean don't <laughs> let that scare you bro issues. yeah anytime you talk about German engineering it's people get a little scared they do. If, it, if it's not issues, it's expensive to fix. That's the mm -hmm. other part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Maintenance is key. Yeah. If you keep up with your stuff, if you take care of your stuff, yep. you're going to get you know, a good lifespan out of it. Mm -hmm. That goes for anything. Absolutely, man. Without a shadow of a doubt. And that goes for any car. I mean, if you're going to be a, a person who's a, a car enthusiast, I mean, you have to accept that there's going to be an associated cost with performance and maintenance. Really. Mm. That is, that's the one thing I wish we could get in the Q50. I'm telling you, man, Nissan Infiniti, if you make me a VR30 equipped Q50, Q60 with a dual clutch transmission, I'm 100% on board, man. You take my money. I'm 100% on board, bro. You heard it. 100% on board. So until that happens, I got to stay German. But I think eventually what's going to happen is they're going to probably start to implement, you know, maybe some of that uh, technology made from GTR, maybe kind of trickle that down a little bit, or maybe if they can just jump on the ZF8 bandwagon that pretty much every same transmission all these other cars are using. That's... That would be key. That would be key. So it says Speed Culture Studios, and I'm glad... We're expanding horizons a bit. Yeah. We're getting into some some Audi stuff today, but I gotta ask. There's a lot of changes in the automotive industry right now. We have the new Supra, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the new mid-engine Corvette. Yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff happening. So, what do you think about the new Supra, and what do you think about that new Corvette? Have you been looking at them at all? Yeah, I've definitely uh, you know taken a look. I see a lot of that on uh, social media, you know, your Motor Trend and Car and Driver and stuff like that. I mean. I'm a huge fan of BMW. I think BMW has done an outstanding job. Uh, huge fan of the uh, the N54, N55 platform. It's got a very nice, aggressive, straight six, uh, single turbo motor with that N55. So I'm glad to see the new B B58 model come out. I think they've actually improved uh, the motor just a little bit more over the previous model. So I think having that as the, uh, the the powertrain in the Supra is, I mean, fantastic. I mean, these motors uh, are tremendously underrated. I was actually watching a video the other day. I saw they did a dyno jet run on a stock Supra and it was way underrated. I mean, it had quite a lot of power left on the table to make some solid gains. So I think if the tunability is there, because from what I understand, I think that that B58 right now, aside from like piggyback tuners like a JV4, I'm not really seeing like a lot of, uh, aftermarket companies offering that at this point in time but i think if they could do that uh you know you saw Eki Tech actually release support for the bmw n55 mm. so that being said if they could get on that support with the, the b58 uh, as they did with the 55 i think that would be phenomenal man i mean i think that that motor is an absolute tank and as far as the mid-engine mid corvette uh very excited i think that the price point is very impressive i think a lot of guys are really amazed as far as like how much car you're getting for the yeah. money because 
we're talking zero to 60 in less than three seconds. I mean, we're dealing with super hard numbers. So, yeah. I mean, you've got a lot to work with there. So keeping that price point down, I think that makes just such an attractive platform for anybody that wants to get into something like that. Yeah, Chevrolet with the Corvette definitely stayed true to their, their heritage. High yeah. performance for, you know, at, in an affordable range. Um, and what do they say? It's sticker at like 60,000 or something like that. Yeah, so say what you will about the styling. I mean, I, yep. I have my my opinions as well. I'm not a big fan of the rear end, mm -hmm. but you can't deny the performance of that, of that car, at least the numbers. We'll see what, what it's doing on the street. But I do like that steering wheel, and you changed that up. I did actually. So it's tremendously rare for an Audi A3 model to have um, paddle shifters from factory. This steering wheel here actually came from an Audi S3. I um, actually got it from a seller in Germany. So this one oh. you can see it's got the, the beefier tendon two notches as well as that uh, perforated leather as well as the paddle shifter. So something that's kind of hard to find, but I was really lucky. I managed to come up on one for a reasonable price. Uh, for anybody watching that wants to know how to swap, it's a simple plug and play. So that's really a nice upgrade for a nice uh, steering wheel there. That was my next question. So easy installation. Easy install. Yeah, I took it over to George at Soho and he had it be done in like an hour. In, yeah. At the end of the day, you've got an Audi A3, you've got an S3. If somebody wants a little bit more of a, a luxurious, uh, sporty package uh, right out of the box, I mean, the S3 is going to be a better starting point. You've got your IS38 turbo, you've got better suspension, you've got bigger brakes, so on and so forth. But for somebody that's going to really start from scratch and just, you know, if you're going to do full coilovers, if you're going to go big brakes all the way around, new tires and wheels, if you have uh, the intentions to go above and beyond um, an IS20 or IS38 OEM turbo, I mean, you can really get an A3 at or above the performance of an S3 right. for a significantly lower cost up front. I mean, like, like I said, you could look at it and say, well, you know, uh, there's some components uh, within the engine internals of like uh, an S3 or a Golf R that are going to be a little bit, little bit better, a little bit more of an improvement there, as well as uh, the A3 would have a six-speed DSG, whereas the S3 would have a seven-speed DSG. Again, you can kind of get down to the nitty-gritty there uh, as far as like the gearing and whatnot. But I think that for someone that wants affordable, reliable performance, you just can't beat the A3 for the money. Well, there you have it. I guess there's no arguing with it. Just can't beat the A3 for the money. It's definitely a really solid, really capable car. Audi A3 APR Stage 2 Quattro. I think I got it. Really awesome car. Really kind of un unsuspecting, um, kind of a sleeper. Really sharp, really sharp blue. I can't remember. What did you say? What's the name of the color? Really sharp wheels. Big brakes kind of give it away a little bit, but you wouldn't expect the car, um, how quiet it is at idle. Um, but when you get in it and you put the gas pedal to the floor, uh, it pulls hard. It puts a lot of that power and torque right to the ground through that all-wheel drive system and that dual clutch. Really, really hard to beat that. I realize now putting the video together, we didn't film, uh, at least with my cameras, a, a good ending clip. So here it is right now. Evan, I appreciate your time very, very much. Savage Panda Projects, guys. If you got a chance, please go over to his channel. He's got a lot of great content, um, a lot of good information if you're interested in. And the Audi platform's got some old Q50 stuff as well. So super knowledgeable guy, if you couldn't tell from this video. Really knows what he's talking about, especially when it comes to German engineering and the Audi, Volkswagen, BMW type, uh, type stuff. So if you have any interest at all, head on over to his channel and hit the subscription button, would you? Thank you again, Evan, very much for meeting me the other day at Soho Motorsports. Uh, appreciate it very, very much. And looking forward to getting together again soon. Maybe we'll hit the mountains. And thank you guys very, very much for watching. Really, really appreciate your support, your continued support. Uh, look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video. Thanks.